Berkeley, California was the site of the American Islamic Finance Project's historic training for American imams. The basic training in Islamic finance was the first of its kind and couldn't have come at a better time as the availability of Islamic financial products in the U.S. seems to be growing. The event was kicked off with an opening ceremony that featured an impressive lineup of keynote speeches from select community leaders, including ISNA Secretary General Safa Zazur, Zaytuna College co-founder Sheikh Hamza Youssef, Guidance Financial Group founder Dr. Mohammed Hamour, and the leading Islamic finance scholar of our time, Sheikh Mohammed Taki Usmani. Safa Zazur. If you look at societies in general, all over the world, every society's strengths and weakness is measured by the development and the strengths of five basic social institutions in that society. And those five basic institutions are the institution of the family, the institution of religion, the institution of education, the institution of economics, and the institution of politics or civil society. Economically, we want this community to be a strong, vibrant economic community. And, and if you look at, at, at the two things that hamper that development economically, two of them. One is this issue of Islamic financing. And that how many entrepreneurs in the Muslim community, they run a shop of five, six, seven employees when they could be running a shop of 500 employees. It just, they look at the options out there and they say, you know what, if I'm going to expand, I'm going to need financing. If I'm going to need financing, I'm going to have to do it this way. That's, that, that's not consistent with my religion. So he stays small when he could be very large, very big. And it is important for us. Of course, the other thing is, is the issue of, of identity, which is a very important uh, issue for, for the Muslim community at large. And believe it or not, as, as, inter, you know, as, as um, counterintuitive as it is, owning your own home is perhaps one of the most important ways to make a person identify with the locality. Identify with it, become a part of it, what is about its, its, its infrastructure, its education, everything else in it. And how many Muslims are hampered from going in that direction because they fear what's out there. The role of our imams, the role of our masajids in making sure that those five institutions are reinforced, are supported, are strengthened, so as a community, as a whole, we can move forward is absolutely vital. And your presence today here is an absolute testimony of your commitment. We are grateful for it. We appreciate it. It's only the beginning, inshallah. And, and ISNA is committed to do that with, with other partners, and in this case, with guidance who have been tremendously instrumental and, and visionary really in, in, in trying to chart forward a new course that will elevate us as a community to the next level. Sheikh Hamza Youssef. Now, we know the, the terrible sin of riba. This is, of all the sins of Islam, really after shirk, there's probably no sin that I think the Muslims uh, have uh, utter awe of in terms of the possibilities of eternal damnation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the only time that a declaration of war from Allah and His Prophet is mentioned in the Quran is in relation to the sin of usury. More fundamental is to look at a deeper problem that we have that underlies the entire system of economics that has emerged in the modern world. Because this system is very alien to pre-modern uh, systems of economics and has led to immense suffering, human suffering, environmental degradation, the gross exploitation and abuse of people around the world. Things that people here, there are laws that have been enacted that were enacted as a result of an incredible amount of struggling. But I'd like to look at the problem of usury uh, from the Abrahamic traditions before uh, this uh, pre-modern world. Because Jews and Christians and Muslims, the Abrahamic faith, all shared this essential idea of the prohibition of usury. And the Jewish community, which has within their text the permission of loaning, and this is condemned in the Quran, of loaning to non-Jews, 
uh, with usury, but uh, they also have the, the idea of the jubilee, of relinquishing debts after seven years, of giving people, uh, the, the Quran calls it nadira, you know, giving them time in a maysara to, until they can uh, actually pay their debt. So within the Jewish system, they have means of doing that. Um, if you look, the Jews, if you lend money to any of my people who are poor among you, you shall not be like a money lender to him, you shall not charge interest. If you ever take uh, your neighbor's garment as a pledge, you shall return it to him before the sun goes down. For that is his only covering, it is his garment for his skin. What will he sleep in? And will it be that he cries for me? I will hear, for I am gracious. So this is one of the fundamental texts in Exodus. The uh, Leviticus, if one of your brethren becomes poor and falls into poverty among you, then you shall help him like a stranger or a sojourner that he may live. Take no usury or interest from him, but fear your God that your brother may live with you. You shall not lend him your money for usury, nor lend him your food at a profit. Again, these are uh, Islamic ethical principles. Deuteronomy, you should not charge interest to your brother, interest on money or food or anything that is lent out at interest. Now, obviously, this is interpreted brother here to mean uh, your brother in faith. And so there was an idea that you could lend. To the foreigner, you may charge interest, but to your brother, you shall not charge interest. This is condemned uh, in, the, in the Quran, this idea of having a double standard. Aristotle says, of all forms of wealth acquisition, the most unnatural and odious is that by means of usury. So this is something that even the philosophers acknowledge uh, was uh, unacceptable. Dr. Muhammad Hamur. The religion of the last Prophet Sallam has given such an importance to the way we can live as individuals, as a society, as people who seek meaning in, in their life to the way we can live in this context, in this economic realm. I think it is providential that perhaps the one profession that our Prophet Sallallahu has practiced is the profession of merchant. It is providential, as Sheikh Hamza mentioned, that maybe a third of the books of fiqh are about commercial transactions. It is providential that page after page of the Quran relies on economic symbolism, economic guidance in, in various realms. The essence of a lot of the pro prohibition of riba is on the exchange of money or, or commodities used as money against money as opposed to exchanging money for goods or tangible realities, exchanging money for money. And any profit that is sought through such exchange is considered illegitimate, is considered riba. So it's as if when you seek to profit, to gain, you should seek to exchange what is illusory, what is only a shadow of value for what is real, tangible, higher value. But if you seek to exchange shadows for shadows and deny the need to go higher than that, isn't that the reflection of pure worldliness? Staying within the realm of illusion, staying denying a higher reality. Isn't there a connection between the practice of riba and the denial of the hereafter of higher reality. There is a tremendous amount of work and burden that we as carrying the Islamic tradition have to fulfill our role in this age of bringing an eternal wisdom into a realm that is uh, 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 fragmenting the society uh, uh, leading it to, to uh, an existence of where it is building and not building, growing and collapsing, feeling that uh, it is onto something uh, very powerful and the next day a panic, a crisis, leading to a complete loss of faith in the system. And then people looking for patches and regulations until enough time passes that they can forget the crisis and rebuild into another one. I think that the responsibility for us as a community in this world 
of, of bringing this teaching first to ourselves individually, then to uh, the entire ummah of humanity collectively is a responsibility that starts with le relearning our tradition and understanding how it can apply uh, in, in, in this modern uh, civilization. Sheikh Mohammed Taqi Usmani. It is indeed a great event that Guidance Financial Group, in collaboration with some other quarters, has arranged a training workshop on the subject of Islamic finance. I have been told by the organizer of this workshop that the training would be based on the standards set by the Sharia Council of AOFI in Bahrain. My dear brothers, in fact, as Muslims, we are not supposed to be Muslims only in our places of worship, in our mosques, in our madrasas. We are supposed to follow the Islamic principles and Islamic precepts throughout our, of our life in all sorts of our activities, in our social activities, in our economic activities, in our political activities as well. A collaborative effort between Guidance and the Islamic Society of North America, the AIF project's purpose for the training was to raise the level of knowledge and understanding of Islamic financial transaction law among imams serving communities in the United States. Alhamdulillah, it's easier to talk about Islamic finance today than perhaps even five years ago. We have um, much more knowledge sharing to thank. We have the creation of Islamic financial institutions uh, to thank. But now we have to get to the next level, which is get it to the people. The intensive two-day training of nearly 100 imams was conducted by the Ethica Institute of Islamic Finance, the world's leading provider of Islamic finance training. One actually useful thing to, you know, write on the back of your hand uh, for, you know, whenever you need it is, is to have this idea that Musharaka is equity-based and Mudarba is equity-based and Ijara is lease-based. It's the only one. A financial institution that comes in and a customer who comes in and they co-own a, a property and initially, the financial institution owns most of it, and eventually, the customer owns most of it. And in that intervening period, there's two payments. There's the rent for the part of the property that you don't own, using very simple terminology. So if you don't understand it, let me know. For the part you don't own, you pay rent. Upon successful completion of the training, all of the attendees were honored with a certificate of training, along with free access to Ethica's e-learning portal for two months. The participating imams then had a chance to tour the campus of Zaytuna College, the first accredited Muslim American college, where Imam Zaid Shaker and Sheikh Hamza Youssef engaged the imams in an enlightening discussion about the future of education for Muslims in America. To learn more about the AIF project, visit AmericanIslamicFinance.com.